What's going on airplane collectors? Welcome back to another video to host Ray. Today I'll be reviewing the in-flight 200 United Airlines Airbus A320. And I believe this is the first time this model in specific has been posted to YouTube. So I'll do my best of covering everything that I can in this review. Uh, basically I'll talk about the box, then the aircraft overall, and then I'll begin an in-depth analysis of the model's features. And at the end of the video I'll tell you what I personally think of the model from a collector's perspective and whether I recommend it to you or not. So there's a lot to cover and I don't want to waste time. So let's do this. So first let's discuss the box. The box is not like most other one to 200 scale aircraft boxes. Uh, first off, this box art isn't really box art. It's actually just a flap that covers the main box. So I'll show you guys that in a sec. Uh, Otherwise, it looks pretty nice, very simple, but it's also interesting with this, I'm not sure, this yellow circle. I'm going to assume that's the sun setting in the background. It looks pretty nice. Uh, box in overall size, is it's moderately sized. It's 22 centimeters tall, 21 centimeters wide, and about 3.5 centimeters thick. So um, do what you want with that information. Here's the bottom. Uh... Backside, there is no right and left side because that's how you access the main box. And here's the top. Looks pretty cool. And main box, just it's just a white box. It has nothing on it except for a tag displaying information about the aircraft. So uh, there's that. It's pretty plain overall. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to make a bad joke where I saw the opportunity. Uh, let's discuss the airplane. So when you open up the box and extract the contents, you'll receive the model, a display stand, and the optional gears extended or retracted configuration of parts. Here you can see I've already attached the landing gear, but when you first open up the model, uh, none of these covers will be attached. So you can attach the landing gear or the uh, retracted landing gear option. And these are attached magnetically, so I'll, I'll discuss those more in depth later. Sometimes on in-flight 200 models, there's all, there's a little card displaying a picture of the model and some information about it. However, on this one, there isn't. It's just what you see here. Before I begin the in-depth analysis of the model, I'd like to talk about some basic things. The uh, model is moderately sized compared to most things. It's about 19 centimeters in length from the tip of the nose to the APU. Uh, 17 and a half centimeters in wingspan from tip to tip and from the ground to the tip of the tail It's about six centimeters tall Now I'll we'll begin the analysis portion of the video first I'd like to talk about the fuselage and we'll start at the front of the aircraft uh, You can see a lot of printed detail up here in the front. No shape looks fine cockpit windows Overall, this is pretty solid. I don't think you'll find much better on the 1 or 200 scale market anywhere else Something I have been told by other collectors is that the cockpit windows here are a little too are printed a uh, little too large. However, they look just fine to me. So uh, form your own opinion with that information. Uh, but yeah, let's continue. As we move down the fuselage, you can see the giant United title looks very good. Um, you can see the overwing exits also look fine. And going to the rear of the aircraft, there's really not much to see until you hit the tail section. And here you can see the registration uh, door tail just ton of other things here. Uh, overall, it looks pretty good. I see no issues whatsoever, no issues in printing so far. So yeah, let's continue. Here's the right side of the fuselage. I'll just show you what it looks like since it's virtually identical to the left side. And as a result, I won't provide any commentary for it. Looks pretty good. Let's discuss the wings for a bit. Wings look pretty good, however, there's a few issues that I'd like to make uh, note of that I wasn't aware of until now. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of engraved detail, such as the flaps and the air brakes. But something I did notice is that in certain spots, you can see right now in the reflection, the paint actually ends up going a little too deep. There was a little too much paint applied onto some of the engraved details and that ended up filling them in. So uh, that rendered them invisible. I'll uh, compare the two sides momentarily. So to help you visualize what I'm discussing here, uh, take a look at this detail on the left flap. You can barely see it. However, on the right flap, it's almost completely visible. So. At the first glance, with the naked eye, you won't see some of those de details, so if you're picky about that, like I am, 
then just uh, be aware of that when buying in Flight 200 models. Aside from that, wings look just fine. There's a lot of detail on them. Uh, I like the way that the paint was done. Colors look correct. Uh, pretty accurate overall, aside from that issue that I mentioned earlier. Let's talk about the wingtip fences real quick. Wingtip fences look very nicely done. I think these are some of the best, if not the best, on the 1 to 200 scale market. Uh, very nicely shaped. These were one of the selling points for me. Uh, I'm very picky about wingtips, and these overall satisfy me and my um, picky requirements for these. And here's what the alignment looks like. On both sides, it looks like they're good. I don't see any like bends or um, paint chips or anything out of the ordinary. Let's discuss the rear of the aircraft. Rear of the aircraft looks just fine. Horizontal and vertical stabilizers look correctly placed. I don't see any issues with them. Um, something I did notice on the tail here is the color fade from the light blue to the almost black, very dark blue here. I think that's a little too dark up here and it fades too um, slowly, if you know what I mean. It doesn't fade enough and this color isn't bright enough. So take that into account. If you're very picky about the colors and stuff, then I definitely wouldn't recommend getting this model because uh, color here isn't exactly done the best. But aside from that, it looks fine. Let's talk wing flex. Wing flex has been an issue for a lot of model aircraft these days, uh, but on this model it appears as though wing flex is not an issue at all, and per personally I think the wings are at a very good angle compared to what else there is, and in general I think it's pretty accurate. Now for one of my favorite parts of model airplane reviews, let's talk about the engines. The engines, personally, I think they're absolutely beautiful. Uh, here's what the fan blades look like, and I believe they're supposed to spin, however, on my model, uh, this left one here doesn't spin at all, doesn't like to budge, and the right one is very stiff. So if you like your engine blades spinning, then I don't think, I wouldn't recommend getting, getting this model because they might arrive stiff. Um, printed details look really nice, I see a lot of details there, and the exhaust portion, I'll try and show you that. Alright, apologies for the bad view, but this is the best I can do. The exhaust portion looks very nicely detailed. You can see there's a little bit of blue paint in there, so I'm not sure what happened with that. Uh, just, I guess, a small painting issue. And here's the bottom of the engines. Uh, these also look very nicely detailed. Something that's going to be a little hard to analyze and discuss is these little... I'm not sure what they're called. I think they're just, they just guide the airflow to hit the wings here. Um, they're just little protrus protrusions, if you will. Uh, also look very nice. I don't notice any issues with them, and there's actually two of them. There's one down here as well. You can barely see it, but there it is. Both of those look nice. There's no problems with them, and they look good. Here's a better view of what I was talking about. There's the big one here, and then there's a small one right out here. Alright, so here's the top of the aircraft. I'll show you what it looks like directly from the top here so you can get some idea of the proportions of the wings and the fuselage and all that good stuff. Apologies if my fingers are interfering with something you'd like to see. Um, and before I move on to the bottom, I'd like to talk about some of the details up here. Uh, so up here on the top of the aircraft, there are two antennas. Uh, they're both right up here. One and two. They look really good, they're molded nicely, they're attached good, they're not loose, they're very sharp, so very, be careful when handling the model. Uh, there's these two antennas up here and a few antennas on the bottom of the fuselage that can poke you, so I definitely recommend handling these things with care. And you can see there's a little red gem of some type here, it's supposed to represent the light, uh, and it's, it's 3D actually, it's not printed on, so that's also a very nice feature. And back here, you can see the Wi-Fi dome. Wi-Fi dome looks good. I'm not sure if this is correct or not. I'm not an expert on Wi-Fi domes or anything on these airplanes, as a matter of fact. Uh, but yeah, it looks nice. It's attached well, and I don't notice any issues with it. Here's the bottom of the aircraft. Very highly detailed, a lot of printed stuff. Um, and here's the In-Flight 200 logo. It looks pretty cool. Honestly, it's kind of big, but I won't complain since it's on the bottom of the airplane and no one's going to be really looking down there anyway. So... I'll show you the antennas down here. There's one right here. It's a pretty short one. This is one of the longer ones, like the ones on the top of the fuselage. And then there's one right here. And there's also another light uh, protrusion right here. So just be careful when handling the model. Um, and I recommend holding the model like this, just with two of your fingers on the side, so you don't poke any of the antennas and risk breaking them. That essentially concludes the analysis portion of the video. Yes, I will discuss the landing gear shortly. 
but if that's what you're here to see, that's pretty much it. I'm now going to talk about the display stand and the landing gear configuration options. So here's the display stand. It's pretty small. It's proportional to the size of the airplane. It looks good. It's not too big. It's not oversized either. Uh, here you can see it just says United Airbus A321 or 200 scale. And this is what it attaches to the aircraft with. And something I really appreciate is this giant foam cushion that protects the model from damage. All you have to do is just set the, um, just attach the display stand like this. It's a nice and snug fit. It's a little loose, but it's nothing insane. Like your model won't fall off. So uh, your model is secure when it's on the stand. On the topic of landing gear, let's start a discussion here. I've received re mixed reviews uh, in discussions I've had with other uh, model collectors that the landing gears are a little, um, they're not the best out there. And I kind of have to agree with them. In terms of overall detail, these things are very highly detailed. Uh, you can see the wheels roll here on the nose wheel and the, the the wheel rotates. And here on the main landing gear, I'm sorry if the camera doesn't focus, they also roll. And they're also very highly detailed. And that detail portion does also account for a, I guess, something bad. Because I've been told that these gear are very flimsy and uh, easy to break. And the details sometimes arrive broken to some collectors. However, I was very fortunate and the model arrived just fine to me. So I mentioned earlier in the video that these landing gears are removable and reattachable. And here's what they look like. So they're attached by a system of magnets. And the fit's really nice, very easy to put in and out. However, I don't know if you noticed during the video, I had some trouble handling the model. That's also something that there is to note. The fit is pretty flimsy. So if you're going to be moving the model around on its gear a lot, I'd suggest either gluing them in place or just not doing that. This is dis this is a display model, so it's not meant to be messed around with. Uh, yeah, it's pretty flimsy, and I was paranoid I was going to end up uh, breaking the landing gear too. So just be very careful when handling the model. I'll just say that. Uh, I'll detach them now. Here's what it looks like. Um, attaching them and deta and uh, removing the gear is pretty easy and simple. It's straightforward. Nothing to complain about. However, the attachment of the retracted gear covers, which uh, this is what they look like. Uh, first off, the ones on the wings, they don't have a really good fit. They're very hard to insert into the slots where they belong. And, but removing them is rather easy. I just have to... Uh, remove them with the two little removal utensils that are included with the model. There's two of them. This is only one of them. I'm not sure why they include two of them, but I'm not I'm not going to complain. I guess it's if you lose one. Um, main ones are really easy to remove. As you can see, I can just remove them like that and then attach the main gear like this. And they sit right in there. However, the front nose gear, it's a little different. Attaching the extended gear is just fine, but removing the retracted gear cover it's a pain. It's very hard to do, and I had to actually get a separate pair of precision tweezers to get the job done. And you can see this will bend if I push it too hard, so I have to manually extract that with my hand. Um, just something I wanted to make note of. And with that, the review of this model has concluded. That's basically all I have to say about it. Uh, take a moment to rewatch some parts if you want to take a listen again, and if I missed anything, uh, do not hesitate to drop any questions you have down below in the comments, and I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. Now for my personal opinion of the model, I'll try and make this quick because we're going overboard on time. Um, it's very detailed, very highly detailed. A lot of the things are done correctly, strong points being the nose, wings, engines, uh, landing gear too. I really like all of the features on this, and personally, I think there's a lot of good there's a lot going for this model. There's a decent bit of bad, and they balance out. So overall, this is a nice model. Uh, personally, I prefer this over other 1 to 200 scale Airbus A320 family models. And uh, yeah, so if you are able to find one at a decent price these days, because these do get pretty expensive, I'd suggest buying it. it it's pretty good. Um, but if you are picky about some of the things that I did mention were messed up with this model, then don't get it because they are pretty significant. That's all I've got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching uh, all the way through. Uh, as for more 1 or 200 scale model reviews, I really don't have any intentions of doing many more because I don't really collect 1 to 200 scale. But this was pretty fun to do. Again, ask your questions. Uh, tell me what you thought about the video and any improvements I can do. And I won't keep you here waiting any longer. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.